We are recording. Thank you, Father. Great. Good morning, everyone. Happy whatever day of the week it is. One really doesn't even know anymore. It's Wednesday. So as we usually do, as we always do, let's begin with our prayer. In this time of the year, it's the Angelus. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may, by his passion and cross, be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Yesterday, I did an interview with the Park Record about coffee with Father Gray and our mugs, so something to look forward to in an upcoming issue of the Record of the Park City. There you go. Have fun. It's all fun. <clears throat> I'm having fun, and I hope you are too. Great, let's go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. O God, whose providence never fails in its design, keep from us, we humbly beseech you, all that might harm us, and grant all that works for our good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the beginning of the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God for the promise of life in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. For this reason, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake, but bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to, to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design. And the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began, but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed preacher and apostle and teacher. On this account, I am suffering these things, but I am not ashamed, for I know him in whom I have believed and am confident that he is able to guard what has been entrusted to me until that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm this morning is to you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. To you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. To you, I lift up my eyes, who are enthroned in heaven. Behold, as the eyes of servants are on the hands of their masters. To you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. As the eyes of a maid are on the hands of her mistress, so are our eyes on the Lord, our God, till so he have pity on us. To you, O Lord, I lift up my eyes. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and put this question to him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, 
If someone's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now, there were seven brothers. The first married a woman and died, leaving no descendants. So the second brother married her and died, leaving no descendants, and the third likewise. And the seven left no descendants. Last of all, the woman also died. At the resurrection, when they arise, whose wife will she be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, Are you not misled, because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God? When they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but they are like the angels in heaven. As for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the bush, how God told him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? He is not God of the dead, but of the living. You are greatly misled. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord is being witty. And there's much to say about that, but I want to talk about a couple of things instead. So it, now we're reading from the letter, the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. This is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful piece of scripture. On Saturday, we're going to get to my favorite part of it in the course of these readings. But here, even at the beginning, we have several things that are very good and strong. One of the reasons why I like this letter is that it's rather pithy. He, he, he says things which aren't holding back anything. He says it very clearly. For example, this, as we recall the Pentecost, as we recall the Sacrament of Confirmation, as we recall that which we have received also, listen to this specifically to you. For this reason, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. Specifically that which is the gift of the Holy Spirit. So keep that in mind. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and of self-control. This, this is another part of that which is the Holy Spirit acting in our lives. Power, love, self-control. We have three things here that form a nice little triangle that map out the other things which are inside of that. Power, yes, sure. That is to say, courage and fortitude for example, and love, like those fruits, which are gentleness and kindness and meekness and peacefulness, and also self-control, which is the, the beautiful thing, which is ultimately prudence, something which is very much given to us and, and infused by these other virtues. That which is prudence in our lives is paramount. And <clears throat> all the rest of it kind of comes from there. So the second letter of Paul to Timothy, excellent, excellent, excellent. If you want to, you know, pick up your Bible, actually read it sometime, it's pretty good. Um, it, it really is excellent. And it has lots of good little pieces like that. And like I say, on Saturday, we're going to get my favorite part. So when we think about that, and also with the gospel, power, love, self-control, we think about these Sadducees who come to Christ. And they're trying to be witty too. They're trying to say like, aha, we have this fun little test just to show why blah, 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 blah. It's, it's rather, you know, it's rather petty, you know, when it comes down to it. And the Lord says, I think you don't understand really anything, um, especially scripture and also especially the nature of God. Because God is the God of the living. And it, even though there are many who are dead, who are passed away, like, for example, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the, pa the, the patriarchs of the, the, of, of the people, they are very much alive, and, and, they, and they will continue to be. And this funny little thing about the, the seven brothers and the wife, that's, that's kind of an irrelevant thing. Why should it matter in the resurrection whose wife or husband someone is? That's not the point. The point is to be with God that union is much bigger. But of course, there's much, again, there's much more to say on that, but I'm not going to talk about that today. What I want to talk about is also the saint of today's. Today's saint is a particularly interesting one and a very poignant one 
for these days, for these days that are so full of anxiety and social unrest and anger. So gifts of the Holy Spirit, anger is not one of them. In fact, anger is a capital vice. That's one of the seven deadly sins. When we give ourselves over to it, we may have power and love even, but they've been corrupted and changed into something which is uncontrollable and to change into something which is essentially in its, in that is in its essence, evil. St. Charles Luanga died not that long ago. So it was, I think, 1866 was, was I think, his, the year in which he died on this day. And <clears throat> the context of that was pretty horrific. So it was Uganda, all right? So, you know, a place that not many of us think about all the time, but is a very important place, actually, in that which is the history of Africa and the history of the world. And the situation was a pretty bad one. Now, the, this topic is maybe a little bit more adult than some of our listeners may be willing to hear right now, but I'm going to simply say this anyway. Charles Luanga was a page, and then he became the um, Camerlengo. How do you say that in English? The, the, the guy in charge of the stuff of the king, of the king's household, his life. The, the Chamberlain, that's it. He became the Chamberlain over the course of several very unfortunate events. Um, in 1865, the King Mwanga um, had a little bit of a nutty. He got very annoyed that these Europeans were coming to his country, uh, which was, his kingdom was not quite all of Uganda, it was the Southern part. Um, and they were converting the people to Christianity, both Catholics and Anglicans, but they were being converted to Christianity. And he saw this as a threat. And so in 1865, he began massacring the Christians, especially the foreigners. A political threat, a cultural threat, a threat to himself, to his power. But as typical for people who act in this way, who act out, out of anger, and are so malicious, he was hiding something. And the thing that he was hiding was very unfortunate. And this is the part that's a little bit weird. He was a pedophile. He was a ritual pedophile. It was something that was inculcated into the religion that he followed. Obviously, this is not a good thing. So one of the things that Charles Lawanga did was to protect the other pages from the king's advances. Charles Lawanga, after the first Chamberlain of the sequence was murdered for his faith, for being a Christian, became the next Chamberlain. It was not known that he was a Christian until a little bit later when it was discovered and finally he was sentenced to death. And he died on this day in 1866, I'm pretty sure, along with like a dozen, a dozen other of these members of the king's household who were also found to be Christians, uh, Catholics and Anglicans. And so they died for their faith. The thing about it is, is that especially in Charles Luanga's case, he had a whole, you know, big long year of living in fear, but not so much fear of actually standing up to the king in things that were very unsavory and doing so for the sake of the protection of the younger members of this court. The, like the, so many details, of course, always get lost in history, and the explicit flavor of it is, is not really to be had. But I'm pretty sure that we can see a really strong connection here between what he was living through, what caused this, and then where he ended up. That which is a martyr, is something that has to do a lot with this kind of perseverance. Clear-sightedness, strength, this kind of unwavering commitment, courageous even, heroism, self-sacrificing. And not just in the truth, but also that which is the truth of Christ, which can bring torment to the one who bears this witness. This is the situation of the martyrs. But the martyrs 
the martyrs of Christ, they die in faith. He was canonized not that long ago, I think in the, in the 60s. No, early 70s. Doesn't matter. Still, he's kind of a more modern martyr. If you think about it, 18, no, it was 18, uh, not 66, 86. 1885, 1886. If you think about it, like St. Mary's was around. St. Mary's was in Park City for several years. One church had already burned down and they were building the second one, the one that we currently have. And it was already done and things were going on just fine. And um, these things were taking place elsewhere in the world. And it, it really is barbaric, the, the story that I just told. It is, it is very, very, very ugly. And of course, the manner of their death was also very ugly. I don't need to go into details there. But the point of it is this. A martyr has these characteristics like we hear in that second letter of Paul to Timothy. Power, love, and self-control. Not just a kind of simple self-control, like I'm not going to eat chocolate, but actually the kind of self-control that leads to something that allows that faith to grow. And this is the kind of life that as Christians, we are called to live. One that uses power well. One that shows love well. And one that allows us to maintain control of ourselves. This is so important, especially in these days right now, which are so clouded by power being used in malicious ways by many people in many different positions, by love being mistaken and letting that power turn into anger, going in all kinds of directions. In a way, <clears throat> it's worth mentioning how up until now, our, cor our coronavirus time has been kind of simple and goofy and annoying and frustrating, but ultimately not that hard. Now, as we come to grips with the death of George Floyd, as we come to grips with the protests going around our country and the responses to those protests and the escalation of violence happening in some places, and, you know, and frankly, we all know about it because we have the news, because we see things, and these things hurt us, we should recall that that which is the character of the spirit that we have received is one of love and power and self-control. That which is actually martyrdom requires clear-sightedness and an adhesion to the truth of Christ that lasts all the way. The gifts of the Spirit, remember them. The fruits of the Spirit, remember them. Remember that they are things like counsel and understanding that inform prudence and make it good. Things like gentleness and peacefulness which inform that love and make it true. We are called to something very much higher. Let us continue to pray for peace, to pray for the Holy Spirit to come into the hearts of the people of our country, to fill them with grace and fill them with the gifts that lead ultimately to justice. So let us continue now bringing our prayers together, offering them to the Lord, as friends, as fellow Christians. And so let us, you know, if you have anything that you want to say, put it in the chat. If you have anything that we want to bring to the Lord, let us do so together. And so we do so knowing that our Lord will hear us and answer our prayers. For all those who are suffering from the coronavirus, especially for those who have died and their loved ones, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who lost their jobs or are experiencing financial burdens, personal concerns, and other challenges in their life as a result of the ongoing crisis, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the clergy of the Diocese of Salt Lake City, as they continue to shepherd our faith communities amidst challenges and the unknown, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the medical personnel and first responders who are working tirelessly to save lives and keep our communities safe, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the young people in our communities, most especially those achieving milestones like graduations, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For what else shall we pray? Sandy asks that we please pray for her daughter, Lauren, who is celebrating her 29th birthday today, that she may have a spiritually enlightening year ahead. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Debbie asks that we pray for the safety of her father and for his protection from coronavirus as he travels to Chicago from Florida and for the softening of his heart and the opening of his eyes to see the truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The mayor Liz asks that we please pray for the conversion of loved ones outside the faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Clarence asks that we pray in thanksgiving on this Gabriel Francis Cazito Marie's feast day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Elizabeth asks that we please pray for our troubled country. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Kimberly asks that we please pray for our Christian community, that we follow in St. Francis's footsteps to seek first to understand, to love one another, and become channels of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Larry asks that we please pray that God releases us from our resentments. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have made the blood of martyrs the seed of Christians, mercifully grant that the field which is York Church, watered by the blood shed by St. Charles Lawanga and his companions, may be fertile and always yield you an abundant harvest. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. A couple more days of heat in Park City, and then we go back to snow. With that in mind, let's keep praying. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, then eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on your people who cry to you. And by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of Saint Joseph, her spouse, of your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints. In mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother and Church. For the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. All right, everyone have a beautiful day. Enjoy and be people of peace, peacemakers. Amen. 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 All right, see you later. Bye. Thanks, Father. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye, Father Green.